Hello, everyone. This video will go through the story of Mafia Trilogy. In 1930, during the Great Depression, impoverished taxi driver Tommy Angelo encounters a gunfight of two mafia families while he is waging business on the street. He is strong-armed by two members of the Salieri family, Holly Lombardo and Sam Chapney, into helping them escape the ambush by their rival, Morello family. After arriving at the destination, Tommy is well compensated for his help. And told to keep this a secret from the police, which Tommy agrees. But this has made him a target for Morello family. Some days later, Tommy is attacked by two Morello gangsters who trash his cab in an act of revenge. On his way to escape, he meets again Sadiere's men. They help him scare off the Morello gangsters, and then lead him to their boss Don Sadiere. After exacting retribution upon his attackers, Tommy is offered a position in his family by Sadiere. Who demands Tommy nothing but his full loyalty, which Tommy accepts with gratitude. Then Tommy begins to assist with running Salieri's rackets across the city of Lost Heaven. He befriends Polly and Sam during the jobs they perform together, and also by taking order from family consigliere Frank Colletti, Tommy successfully defeats Morello family in a car race, which makes Salieri very delighted. In 1932, Tommy. Now a made man begins a relationship with Sara Marino, the daughter of Salieri's bartender Luigi. After protecting her from a gang of street thugs, on Salieri's orders, Tommy and Polly retaliate against the gangsters by beating them up before killing them all, which shocks Tommy greatly. However, they quickly learn that the gang's leader, whom Polly killed, was the son of corrupt city councilor Roberto Gilotti, who vows revenge. And another gangster has survived the police attack, who may help Gilotti to identify the attackers. Salieri orders Sam to eliminate the survived man at Gilotti's funeral. And meanwhile, Tommy is ordered to blow a brothel not far from there as a distraction. He is also told to kill a Morello's informant, Michelle, who is working there. While facing a woman's pleading, Tommy spares her, gives her some money, and tells her to leave Lost Heaven and never come back. Then Tommy sets up the explosive and heads to St. Michael's Cathedral, where the funeral is taking place. Though he is accidentally recognized by the survived gangster, he and Sam kill him eventually and escape the siege of the police. Then the Salieri family is highly suspected by the police, and they keep irritating the family members to find an excuse to arrest them for their outrageous behavior. But Frank manages to set them straight. One night, Tommy and Polly get a job to drive a shipment from Canada into the city. But when they arrive at the farm where they are supposed to meet Sam and a the receiver, they find him dead and Sam severely wounded. An allied force of Morello family and cops ambushed them in a barn, but Tom and Polly manage to fight their way out and take Sam to a doctor. The failed job makes Sadiere believe that there is a mole in his family, and the fact that Frank disappears with the family's account books further convinces him that Frank is the traitor. Tom is ordered to retrieve the books and kill Frank after. However. But when he finds Frank and discovers that he is forced to make a deal with the FBI after Morello threatens his family, Tommy allows him to flee the country in exchange for the books. After acquiring the book and being told that Frank is dead, Salieri fakes a funeral for him, asking nothing more. In 1935, Tommy, promoted to a capital region for his successes, marries Sarah and starts a family with her. Meanwhile. Learning that a prosecutor, Markings, is bribed by Morello to try to sue against himself, Sadiere hires a safecracker, Silva Torre, and lets Tommy to cover him sneaking into Markings' house to steal the evidence locked in his safe. Then Polly, Sam, and Tommy rob a shipment of wine from Morello in revenge for their loss on Canadian shipments last time. One day, when Sadiere is having lunch with Tommy in a small restaurant, they are attacked by Morello's goons. After taking them all out, Sadiere successfully finds out one of his men, Carlo, is the rat. Then they raid his home and kill him brutally. Upon learning that Sadiere escaped the assassination, Morello is furious, and the tension between the two families also finally grows into a war. Considering city councilor Gilotti is a powerful political support for Morello. Sadiere orders Tommy to take him out first. By impersonating a sailor, Tommy sneaks onto Gilotti's yacht, kills him, and escapes there with the help of Polly and Sam.
The next target is Morello's brother Sergio, whose death will certainly reduce his control on the port unions. However, Sergio proves himself a lucky guy by evading a series of assassination attempts. When Tommy finally corners him in a storehouse of flammables, his ammo runs out, but he ignites the flammables and burns him to death. The ensuing all-out war between the gangsters of both families drives Morello underground, who doesn't show up until someday he holds a charity gala in a theater, and Salieri plans to kill him there as a warning to everyone in Lost Heaven. Though Morello escapes the first round attack and tries to flee out of Lost Heaven by plane, he crashes and is killed eventually. By 1938. The Salieri family is in full control of the Lost Heavens' rackets, and ruthlessly eliminating anyone who opposes them, including the politician Turnbull, who vows to defeat Gans in Lost Heaven after he is elected. Then Tommy, Polly, and Sam are sent by Salieri to recover a stash of diamonds hidden amongst the shipment of impounded cigars. But after they escape the police pursuit and reach a safe area, all of them are shocked to discover that they are heroin in a crate instead. Enraged that Salieri is lying to them about Cargo's true nature and becoming involved in a drug trade despite telling them never do so, Tommy and Polly decide to carry out a bank heist that will allow them to retire without cutting Salieri in. Although the job is a success, Tommy finds Polly dead in his apartment the following day and the stolen money missing. When he meets with Sam to discuss the matter, he quickly learns that Salieri ordered him to kill himself and Polly for going behind his back. And the brothel informant and Frank were murdered by Salieri's men after Tommy's past cover-ups were exposed. Tommy survives Sam's ambush and manages to kill him, but is forced to go into hiding with his family, fearing for their safety. He eventually contacts Detective Norman for help. After relaying his story to him, Tommy offers to testify against the Salieri family in exchange for a reduced prison sentence and protection for his family. Norman agrees to the request, being a family man himself. And the resulting investigation and mob trials lead to most of the Salieri family, including Don Salieri, being convicted and sentenced. After serving eight years in prison, Tom is reunited with his family as they are all placed under witness protection and relocated to Empire Bay. Tom lives a peaceful life with his family until 1951, when two hitmen approach him, accepting his fate and knowing that his criminal past has caught up to him. Tom is shot with a lupara and left to die on his front lawn. He succumbs to his wound, surrounded by his family, content that they are safe now. In late 1920, Vito Scalator was born in Sicily before he and his family immigrated to America and settled down in Empire Bay, living a tough life in the slums of the city. Vito and his friend Joe Barbaro do some illegal things to make money. They are spotted by the police during a jewelry robbery on the street, and Vito is caught while Joe escapes. Instead of going to jail, Vito chooses to join the United States Army as it's the year of 1943, and the American forces need native speakers to liberate Sicily. Enlisted as a jeep driver in a 504th Parachute Infantry Regiment. Vito first experiences the power of mafia when the operation in Sicily goes awry, and a local mafia leader Don Carlo arrives and orders the Italian soldiers to stand down. In early 1945, Vito returns home on leave to Empire Bay and reunites with his childhood friend Joe, who has joined the Clemente crime family in his absence. Though Vito tells Joe that he was wounded by a bullet and needs to go back to the front after being healed. Joe persuades him to stay and supplies him with counterfeit discharge papers. After saving his sister Francesca from a loan shark who is harassing her, Vito learns that his late father left the family in a great debt. Then he tries to seek work with his father's former employer Derek Papalado, who pays him some cash for collecting his debt. The amount being too small to pay off his father's debt, Vito is introduced by Joe to Henry Tomasino, a middleman in Clemente family. He offers some illegal jobs to them both, first stealing some gas stamps, and then breaking into a jewelry store for a heist. Vito and Joe accomplish it well by scapegoating some murder gangsters for the crime. Having gained Henry's trust, Vito and Joe are invited to be involved in a bigger job, assassination, 
which comes from the order of Don Clemente himself. They set ambush in an apartment, attack the target's car, and corner him in a warehouse. When Henry is about to end his life, he is shot and wounded. But Joe and Vito kill the man immediately, and then take Henry to a doctor. After which, Vito is paid for this job. Vito gives all his earnings to Francesca to pay off his father's debt, and is ready to commence a clean and new life. However, he is approached by a police agent one day, and is arrested again. This time for the theft and sale of Russian stamps. Though Joe helps him to find an attorney, Vito is sentenced to ten years in penitentiary. The prison life is a tough one, as Vito meets one of his enemies, O'Neill, a gangster who was scapegoated by Vito and Joe for the jury heist. O'Neill and his men constantly try to assault Vito, which makes Vito punished in a small cell from time to time, until one day. Vito, through his connections outside, meets Leo Galante, the consigliere of Don Frank Vinci, who puts Vito under his protection. Covered by Galante's men, Vito confronts O'Neill alone and successfully kills him, putting his threat to an end. In a prison, Galante tells Vito that there are three families in Empire Bay: Alberto Clemente. Carlo Falcone and Frank Vinci. Galante also suggests Vito to quit working for Clemente, as his lawyer was there only to make sure Vito didn't rat. In 1951, Vito is released early thanks to his connection to Galante. Reuniting with Joe, the pair finds Eddie Scarpa, who works for Don Carlo Falcone. They help him to dispose of cops in his car, and then Eddie gives them some job to deal with the local gangsters. After Vito and Joe complete their job well, they are introduced by Eddie to Don Carlo Falcone. Don Falcone tells them that three of his men has been kidnapped by Luca Garino of Clemente family and asks them to save these men. Vito tracks the trail to a butcher house, where he beats Garino's men before saving the captives. Garino is tortured by his doing, and this makes Eddie and Don Falcone very delighted. Afterwards, Vito and Joe eventually become made men within Falcone's family. Allowing them to secure a better lifestyle, as the previous kidnap was from the order of Don Clemente, which means a war between the families. And also, he learns that Clementes are conducting drug operations against the tradition of the commission. Don Falcone orders Vito and Joe to assassinate Don Clemente. The pair infiltrates into a hotel by impersonating the janitors and places a bomb inside the room where Clemente family will have a meeting. The bomb is detonated unexpectedly, which makes Don Clemente escape the blast. But Vito and Joe engage into a gunfight with his men, chase Clemente's car outside until killing him eventually. Following the hit, Henry approaches Eddie through Vito in search of new employment. Eddie gives him a first job to kill Leo Galante, as Frank Vinci family is plotting against the Falcone. Vito tries to convince Eddie to spare Galante, but to no avail. Then he hurries to Galante's house, warning him, but not before Henry arrives. The three men have a negotiation in the kitchen, where Vito convinces Henry to abandon his mission and let Galante go, who will leave the city forever. Henry agrees and departs, and then Vito helps Galante escape the city. Vito finds his life falling into turmoil after his sister Francesca tells him that her husband is cheating her. Vito solves the problem by violence, but this makes Francesca distance herself from him as she has fear of the mobster lifestyle. Several days later. His house is destroyed in a fire bombing by the Irish mob. To rebuild his fortunes, Vito joins Joe and Henry, who borrow some money from loan shark Bruno Levin, and then uses his money to buy heroin from city triads. The three make a great fortune by selling the drugs to street thugs. However, Carlo Falcone, who is also conducting drug operations behind the commission's back, learns about this and demands a cut of their profits. When Vito and Joe go meet with Henry to discuss matter. They witness trials publicly executing him and escaping with their money. The pair pursue them, but fail to retrieve the money, and learn that Henry was supposedly a federal informant. To pay off the debt to Bruno, Vito and Joe take on a job to assassinate a retired mobster, Tommy Angelo. Vito also helps Derek to intimidate his employees who are discussing a strike. However, these employees are former co-workers of Vito's father. And they tell Vito that Derek ordered his father's death. Afterwards, Vito kills Derek in revenge. 
Vito soon learns that what he and Joe did in Chinatown has sparked a war between the mafia and the triads. Joe is kidnapped by Frank Vinci family, and when Vito goes to save him, he is also caught. The pair manage to escape there, and though wounded, Vito pays off the debt to Bruno. Then he is called by Don Falcone to the planetarium for a meeting. On the way there, Vito is picked up in a car, and by his surprise, he meets a returned Galante, who chastises him for the problem he has caused. However, grateful to Vito for having saved his life, Galante has arranged for him to be spared by the Commission and the Triads, as long as he kills their common enemy, Don Falcone. At the planetarium, Vito discovers that Falcone is prepared and asks Joe to kill him, but the latter sides with Vito and helps him to kill their boss. Afterwards, Vito and Joe leave, meeting Galante outside. Joe is driven off in a separated car. When Vito asks if his best friend is also spared, Galante replies that Joe is not part of their deal. In 1968, Vietnam veteran Lincoln Clay returns home to New Bordeaux. He is picked up by his adopted brother, Alice. Then he reunites with his surrogate father, Sammy Robinson, who is the leader of the Hollow, a local black mob. Father James Ballard and Lincoln's other friends also welcome him very warmly. While initially planning to leave for California, Lincoln decides to stay when he learns that Sammy is facing problems from the Haitian mob and is meanwhile indebted to Sal McConnell, the leader of a local crime family. The Haitians are robbing Sammy's men, so he asks Lincoln and Alice to take out the men behind the scene. Lincoln finds the leader, Barker, who ordered the attack out of his grudged hollow working with the white men. Lincoln kills him ending the conflict between Hollow and Haitians. He also releases a woman named Cassandra, who seems a captive by Barker. Afterwards, Sammy sends Lincoln to go and see McConnell on his behalf, as he is still unable to pay off his debt. Upon meeting, McConnell suggests Lincoln to take over the Hollow from Sammy, who he thinks becomes incapable, but Lincoln declines. McConnell appreciates loyalty, and then recruits Lincoln and Alice to do a heist for him, which can clear Sammy's debt. They will help McConnell's son, Georgie, to rob the city's branch of Federal Reserve during the local Mardi Gras celebrations. Aided by their friend, Danny Burke, the group sneaks out through the tunnel beneath. Though Danny is wounded in the process, and there are cops in the area, they complete the heist successfully, with Lincoln voluntarily covers the team. Having brought all the money back to Sammy, Lincoln and his friends are delighted celebrating when McConnell arrives, taking his cut as planned. However, it turns out that McConnell and his son have used them all. They kill Sammy, Alice, and Danny before taking away all the money. Lincoln is also shot and left to die in Sammy's bar after it's set on fire, but he is rescued by Father James. After recovering, Lincoln contacts his former CIA handler, John Donovan. He agrees to help Lincoln on his revenge by advising him to find an alliance first. First, Lincoln goes to meet Haitian's new leader, who turns out to be Cassandra, the woman Lincoln has supposedly saved. She's manipulating Barker and operating as the real boss of Haitian all along. She tells Lincoln that Sammy's hollow has been taken over by Dixie Mafia, the leader of which is Richard Doucet. By capturing a small thug in Dixie Mafia, Lincoln knows the whereabouts of Doucet. Then he finds him and strangles him on a ferris wheel, sending a threatening message to his enemies. Lincoln finds Danny's father, Thomas Burke, an Irish mobster, whose turf was grabbed by rival, Barbieri. Lincoln helps him kill his rival and take back the turf, and then the two agree to work together to revenge on McConnell. Donovan helps Lincoln to discover a potential ally and exile the Sicilian mafioso, Vito Skeletor, who joined McConnell's ranks as part of a deal made with the commission. He is betrayed by his nephew and left to die in a freezer. Lincoln saves Vito and helps him capture his nephew, who upon being tortured, confesses that his betrayal is ordered by McConnell. Cassandra, Thomas, and Vito are teamed up by Lincoln to take down the McConnell family. They also learn that McConnell has recently begun building a new casino with the intention of becoming independent of the commission, which seems to be his weak point. Then he starts with McConnell's lieutenant, Tony DeRazio, who is helping McConnell with his business. Lincoln throws him out of his penthouse and retrieves the ledger of McConnell family.
The next target is Lu, McConnell's brother. He is a wealthy businessman and has wild connection in politics, who keeps drawing political support for McConnell's building of casino. Lincoln attacks Lu on a boat, though it's interrupted by a gas explosion. Lincoln tracks him onto the river bank, kills him, and ties the body to a statue in New Waldo. Lu's death shocks McConnell and his son, who soon realize that Lincoln is still alive and seeking revenge on them. Then McConnell lets his another brother, Tommy, ambush Lincoln in the gym, outnumbered. Lincoln is subdued and pulled with gasoline as Tommy is about to burn him to death. However, Lincoln gets free at the last moment and counterattacks, leaving a severely wounded Tommy in a room set on fire. After eliminating all of McConnell's lieutenants and couples who were tasked with obtaining real estate, counterfeiting money to cover mounting expenses, and getting politicians to legalize gambling, Lincoln attacks the casino, killing McConnell's remaining men and Georgie before confronting McConnell himself. Accepting his fate, he shares a drink with Lincoln while explaining that although he doesn't regret his actions, he had only tried to improve New Bordeaux and get himself and his family out of the life of crime before anything bad happened to them. After killing McConnell, Lincoln leaves the casino and is greeted by Commission Consigliere Leo Galante, who is sent to investigate attacks against McConnell. Satisfied that Lincoln's vendetta is over, Galante informs him that he can take over the new border underworld businesses, provided the commission receives a cut of the profits. Afterwards, Lincoln informs Father James and Donovan of McConnell's death. The latter advises him to take over, while the former, appalled with such a concept, reminds Lincoln that his goal was to remove McConnell, not to replace him. Lincoln agrees. He leaves New Bordeaux and heads to California, starting to live a secret life there.